The President. The CIC still now resumes to continue the scrutinizing the private health care facilities bill. Mr. Holden Chow, thank you, President. President, even though I'm not a member of the bill's committee, however, when it get to the committee stage, I would like to respond to the, some of the views raised by some members and yesterday. I noticed that some of the amendments intention oh, were meant to uh, strengthen the governance of the private health care facilities, especially as doctors at the chief medical executive, that there will be a restriction on a number of uh, clinics and the medical facilities he can manage just to ensure that the uh, governance and the operations and the safety of the standard. I agree with this policy direction. And I heard of Dr. Fernandez Cheng's amendment, which has to do with the uh, nursing home uh, forestry requirement to 16.5 me meters per person. First of all, nursing home, according to Dr. Cheng, he feel that um, it will not be discussed in the PHF bill. And going with this logic, uh, it makes sense. According, uh, according to him, that the government is setting the standard at 6.5 meters, which he agreed well, it's actually too low by worldwide standards. Well, uh, putting aside the uh, minimum number that the administration claims that it would uh, to, uh, delete the uh, 6.5 meters floor area requirement. In other words, the government had already sensed that the minimum area per person and should not be discussed under this PHF bill. And since the government had decided to scrap this provision, then we suppose that we shall leave that to another day and another place to debate on the uh, nursing home floor space requirement per person. And yesterday I heard that Dr. Chang had come with a lot of su suggestions. Well, um, what, what, and um, 6.5 square meters is not sufficient and according a lot of national experience and standards. I suppose that we can save it for another time and place to, to focus on this. So I'll apply this logic for Dr. Chung to remove the amendment and to raise that requirement to 16.5 square meters. I found it unnecessary. So that's the views I want to raise. Thank you, President. Mr. Tony Chair. Thank you, President. We're now uh, scrutinizing the private health care facilities bill that to provide a new regulatory regime for four types of PHF, namely hospitals, day procedure centers, cl private clinics, and health service establishments, as well as to strengthen um, the, uh, the governance as well as to uh, beefing up the complaint handling mechanism as to enhance transparency. This would uh, really strengthen the patient's rights, so I will offer my support. President, I'm not an expert on medical issues and not a member of this bill's committee. I do not intend to speak, but I noticed that Dr. Cheng and um, without discussing at the bills committee, had moved an amendment to uh, mandate a great improvement on the minimal force space of nursing home residents. I found it unacceptable because the 
Clearly, the nursing home are regulated by the uh, hospitals, nursing homes, and maternity homes registration ordinance. And the government proposed that after this bill has been passed, that it would transfer the regulation to the MRCHE bill. As for the average four space per person at the, uh, the controversy that has set at 6.5 square meters, the government's now proposed scrapping this provision. I have I, I, I agree with the administration, so I would support the secretary's amendment. As for the secretary of uh, failed discuss it at the bills committee stage, and the um, elderly home sector have failed to reach a census and all of a sudden decide to move this amendment. And um, uh, and to uh, double it to 16.5 square meters. And on the uh, criteria on, on calculation is unclear. So I found this to be unsuitable. And to allow, so to a lot a better living environment for the L for the nursing home residents, I believe that no one will uh, disagree with that, but it can be achieved right away. So does that mean that after the amendments pass, these spaces in the nursing home, just like in the Dora Amon cartoon, so by pressing a button that the space will be doubled um, in the flesh. So the administration estimated that if, if the Dr. Jones proposal is passed, the 26 of the nursing homes will not be able to comply with the new requirement, and the 660 uh, residents will be forced to have eviction. Then who will take, uh, accommodate these residents and take care of them? So looking at the past research, the Dr. Chang's mentioned in August, the social welfare sector's proposal to increase the um, average uh, floor space a person. However, um, they only required it for the new homes. While the new ones will be old, one will be for a nine point five square meters. So it will be a gradual approach by means of uh, facing them out naturally. And yesterday, Dr. Chang had already explained that why not with just three months apart, um, he's um, changed tack and to request for the immediate boosting of the minimum area per residence. However, I will not dwell on that. Well, the Hong Kong is facing acute land shortage. Well, not only with that land for housing and for schools and roads and hospitals and for elderly home and nursing homes. Well, these uh, social welfare facilities are not able to Increase due to land shortage. That's why the government proposed to developing the NWNT and is even also the land tower tomorrow scheme. And some members uh, criticized the overcrowdedness of the small, the elderly homes, the smaller than the prison home cell, and accused them to, of elderly abuse. And yet, um, they rejected to the government's uh, land sourcing proposals. And setting real blocks along the way and to filibuster the proposal. It is self contradicting. In the policy address motion of thanks debate, well, assuming that the 74.4 million residents of the average minimum area be increased by 50 square meters, together with all the supporting facilities, they require uh, 2,000 hectares, which is exceeded the size of the um, scale of the land town tomorrow. Dr. Chung, besides care about the living space of the elderly home residents, shouldn't you support um, improving the living environment of all the entire population in support the government's proposal in boosting land supply? I so submit to support the Secretary's amendment. Mr. El Lohin. And yes and, and just now Tony Shea mentioned Land Tower tomorrow. I felt he had digressed it, but it's okay. Well, uh, I believe that um, the president's ruling should be on a uh, lax side. However, the, we shouldn't um, um, pitting um, land for housing and the uh, small for requirement for nursing home. So, um, in uh, using this um, nursing home 
specific requirement to accuse is not supporting Lantau to more. Well, if not for a disqualification, it should be Mr. Edward Yu. Okay. So I will not uh, uh, dwell it further. I wonder if uh, Secretary Chen can clarify the conflict between doctors and the beauty sector. So from the debate, I heard a lot of this um, t debate is unnecessary. So um, before we adjourned last night, I heard that Mr. Xu uh, Kafei, the constituency for the retail and wholesale sector, using his 10 minutes to criticize Dr. KK Kwa, I felt unnecessary as a constituency member. I agree with Dr. Pia Chen. We don't need to pit the beauty sector against the doctors for this bill. And when on the regulation medical devices, you already make this, some certain concessions that give the beauty sector the peace of mind. Well, when the doctor is supervising the medical devices, and they will add to their operational burden. I would like to use the opportunity to inform the beauty sector that we don't need to worry about this uh, case. Looking at the numbers, and on the uh, BTC uh, be uh, beauty and hairdressing sector manpower uh, survey, and for the beauty sector, it employed over 20,000 people, and the uh, medical personnel have a uh, to. Uh, uh, 184 people, uh, and how would, uh, for the, the those in the beauty sector, it is not even less than one percent as of current. There's no substantial increase in the number of medical personnel, and when dealing with a piece of regulation bill that would really uh, target the uh, medical personnel, just like Sophia Chen, they are currently we're regulating four type of facilities. Hospitals, day procedure centers, clinics, and health service establishments. Uh, so, and uh, uh, which claim that we're affecting a lot of the beauty sector that would lead to unnecessary fear in the sector, and you sh should not um, been quoting Dr. K. K. Kwok and accusing him of smearing the beauty sector, and um. Well, I don't think it's actually in conflict with the position of many of those in the sector. Mr. Ao, may I remind you that we're at a CSA stage in scrutinizing the original provisions and the amendments, and we're not in the second reading stage, which we return to this debate. Well, you alamas, Dr. Xu, 10 minutes, so allow me to wrap up. And for... Uh, and for our Federation of Beauty Industry President, uh, some of the high risk medical procedure, beauty procedures are done by doctors, and some of the smaller scale beauty parlors. Mr. Almir, remind you, already digressed. Please return to this topic. Well, I'm actually coming back. Well, I have, I want to talk about the beauty sector before going, returning to the healthcare sector. Since we're dealing with uh, the medical sector, I believe the beauty sector should support it as well because it address the issue of effective governance so that um, the medical uh, beauty uh, incident can be uh, regulated instead of uh, blaming the beauty sector. We should be rational instead of uh, provoking uh, any debate. Any members would like to speak? Mr. Adichu. And for the criticism leveled against Dr. Chen, as for the uh, minimum air per nursing residence, Dr. Chen has made it clear, even if the amendment had been passed, that the government existing statute had can, can exercise discretion to allow the those who have failed the current standards will continue to exist. On the other hand, well. But, According to the government's numbers, 
um, after an and um, to provide the subsidy under the new stand, Dr. Cheng standard, the extra expenditure will be $660 million. So for this sum of money to allow those at the terminal ill and the elderly who at their last stage of life to receive a more dignified uh, care and environment. So I don't quite understand why Mr. Tony Chair is taking opportunity of this occasion to smear Dr. Fernando Zhang. And let me also bring up another issue relating to the debate at the committee stage, which is totally irrelevant to the bill, and that is about the um, artificial island in Lantau. Well, for loyalists like Tony Chair, they have been making accusations suggesting that the pandemics are all against development. So you should not be hypocritic in suggesting that you would support increase in the minimum area per nursing home residence. But this is nothing but deliberate wrongful accusations because once you have completed the population projection in the 2030 study, in terms of future land planning exercises, you should follow your projection. Unless you're overturning your previous projections and studies and suggest that uh, we need much more, much more than was originally projected, the government dare not say that. We need 1,200 hectares of land and brownfield sites well, uh, Mr. Elijju, I've given you time to respond to Mr. Tony Chair's remarks. So thank you, Chairman. I hope that in future, when fellow members speak on the various uses and needs for land, do not make accusations. Please come back to the question. Your moment. Does any other member wish to speak? Ian. If not, well, Secretary, would you like to speak again? I ask for a quorum call.
Sing by Kawai Sung Kok Kok Jang. Secretary for Food and Health, would you like to speak again? Do take, uh... Chairman, let me first respond to members' views on the second group of amendments, and that is deletion of Section 146 of the bill and also Dr. Fernando Jung's amendment in relation to Section 146 and the views. Improving the livelihood of elderly people has always been the focus of the government, but in relation to the issue, there hasn't been any thorough and um, full discussion of the matter. And before consulting the relevant stakeholders, if we ask the Legislative Council to hastily vote on the matter, it will be unfair to elderly people who are affected and unfair to the Legislative Council. It is not an ideal way of uh, formulating policies. I'd like to stress that the objective of the private health care facilities bill is to set up a new regulatory regime for PHFs. The government at the moment has no intention of revamping the relevant requirements imposed on the care facilities, including the minimum area per nursing home residents. I understand members' concerns, but this is not the appropriate opportunity to make a major decision on the relevant matter. In fact, we believe Dr. Fernando Jung's amendment falls outside the scope of this bill, and it also has a charging effect. I'd also like to appeal to members to support the second group of amendments moved by the administration to delete Section 164 of the bill, or Clause 146, by deleting the minimum area per nursing home residence. This act would not have any impact on the arrangement, uh, on, and uh, there will also be other suitable opportunities for legislative members to have a full and thorough discussion on the minimum living area in care homes so that we can come up with a comprehensive uh, proposal. In relation to the first and third group of amendments, as well as the views expressed, before, let me give a succinct reply. First, a number of members, including Dr. Pierre Chen, Dr. K.K. Kwok, and Mr. Ray Chen, spoke about our irrelevant arrangements for regulating the PHFs uh, run by universities, and they hold divergent views. In fact, the exemption arrangements already exist in the Medical Clinics Ordinance Cap 343, which will be replaced by this bill if passed, which means that for the relevant premises managed or controlled by the two universities, they do not constitute medical clinics under the ordinance. I'd also like to point out that these two universities have taken into account the unique characteristics of their facilities and the need of the stakeholders and have drawn up a um, sound governance structure with autonomy and they are also governed by the relevant uh, legislation and the, school, and the university councils. They have the academic and operational autonomy. Duplicating the regulation of the PHFs of these two universities uh, may not be the best way of utilizing resources. And I would like to say 
here very clearly that both universities are aware of the fact that the uh, medical service establishment under the control um, uh, can uh, be exempt from the regulation of the ordinance. If the Department of Health receives information that there are establishments that do not uh, satisfy the conditions set down in the uh, bill, then uh, the um, exemption would be revoked. And we've also uh, informed the uh, department, the two universities that have to inform the Department of Health if any of the establishments do not uh, fall within the uh, scope of exemption. And the Department of Health can at once require uh, such a medical services establishment to apply for a license. Dr. Pierre Chen uh, said that should a bill be passed, how can we ensure that the industry uh, can uh, be, uh, how the industry can understand uh, the bill? And uh, we're going to send letters to dentists and um, doctors. We'll have briefings. Uh, we'll, we'll also have um, APIs and uh, sound clips. And we will have a publicity campaign on online as well to ensure that the public are aware of uh, the commencement dates of the various provisions of the bill. And then we will uh, disseminate the relevant information to the um, stakeholders to ensure that they uh, will cooperate with us. Um, Mr. Tommy John also talked about the transparency of uh, price. Uh, given that uh, we have a free economy, we will not interfere into the uh, fee levels of um, private health care facilities, and we will allow such facilities uh, to set their own uh, fee schedules so that they can uh, be competitive. However, we would like to enhance the price transparency of uh, private health care facilities so that uh, consumers can make informed choices. So starting from the October of uh, 2016, uh, together with private hospitals, we have rolled out a um, pilot scheme to enhance the tri price tr transparency of uh, private hospitals. Private hospitals have launched three measures to enhance transparency. Uh, first, uh, the um, fee estimates uh, to announce a fee schedule and to um, uh, announce uh, the statistics, historical statistics on fees and charges of um, common uh, treatments and procedures. We have said in the bill that under the new uh, regulatory regime, the licensee of such a facility will have to uh, publicize uh, the um, information of fees and charges to the public. And uh, for some uh, specified um, procedures and statistics, uh, there should uh, be a budget of budget estimates. And uh, there should also be publication of historical statistics on fees and charges. And in light of uh, views collected during the public consultation and also um, the outcome of uh, the uh, pilot scheme, we have uh, required licensees to uh, make known uh, their fee schedules. And we've also adopted Mr. Tommy Jones' proposed amendments raised at the bill's committee stage as uh, the government's amendments. And uh, that is how uh, the government uh, can make regulation in relation to uh, measures to enhance uh, price 
transparency as soon as the bill is passed, and we will consult uh, the um, stakeholders to work out the details of the regulation. We expect to consult the council uh, in early next year to enhance the price transparency and certainty of private health care facilities uh, so that we can uh, help to balance uh, the uh, demand for both public and uh, private health care services. And we'll also um, make this known to the public. Ms. Alice Mack, hopes that after the bill is passed, uh, we can work on related legislation. They would want the administration uh, to uh, complete uh, the legislative exercise as soon as possible to protect the uh, health of the public as well as the interests of consumers. Ms. Alice Mack has proposed uh, two pieces of legislation, and may I briefly um, brief members on this. We intend to s introduce a bill on um, health care equipment or devices. We propose to regulate uh, the introduction of medical devices pro pre and uh, post introduction to ensure that medical devices are safe and uh, the quality and efficacy and uh, a, and uh, effectiveness must meet certain standards before they can be launched into the market and uh, to introduce uh, regulatory um, measures on medical devices. Uh, the uh, current bill uh, is silent on regulation of medical devices. And now we are uh, pressing ahead at full steam the um, drafting of the bill on regulation of uh, medical devices. We briefed uh, the council uh, the latest uh, development of our work in last July, and then we intend to submit a bill to the council for its scrutiny. Another uh, legislation will be regulation of uh, advanced treatment or therapy products. Ms. Alice Mack has mentioned this, and uh, we have set up a task force uh, to um, work on this, uh, on regulation of advanced therapeutic uh, products in Hong Kong. And then in uh, April to June uh, this year, we had a two-month public consultation. We expect to submit a relevant bill to the Council within 2019. As regards uh, less risky uh, cell and tissue treatment or therapy, we, uh, Ms. Alice Mack mentioned, that uh, also mentioned uh, the regulation of clinics and also uh, beauty centers. Now, if in a Beauty Center, there is a registered medical practitioner to serve clients. Uh, the center will be subject to the regulation of uh, this bill. Depending on the quality of services, the uh, beauty center may have to register as a, a day procedure center or a clinic, and it will have to comply with uh, the licensing conditions and the codes of uh, the Department of Health in terms of infection control, uh, uh, drug control, and um, so on and so forth. They will have to comply with all these uh, conditions. I'm talking about uh, beauty centers uh, with a practicing medical practitioner to provide services. Ordinary beauty centers uh, will not uh, fall into the regulatory scope of this bill. And uh, regulation is on a risk basis. Well, even uh, if uh, for premises uh, there is only one single doctor uh, serving, now if for um, medical procedures under Schedule 2, then a day Procedure center license has to be obtained. 
and will be subject to relevant regulation. Mr. Chen Hampen said that under the new uh, system, uh, will uh, what, what will be the manpower arrangement of the Department of Health? Our office for uh, regulating private healthcare uh, facilities uh, will. Uh, are regulating uh, 12 hospitals uh, under the um, Hospitals, Nursing Home and Maternity Homes Registration Ordinance and also 80 odd medical clinics under the Medical Clinics Ordinance, CAP 343. So there will be 2,000 odd private health care facilities that require licenses uh, from the Department of Health and there will be about 3,000 uh, small practice units requiring uh, exemption from the Department of Health. Since the Department of Health will have a uh, um, much larger number of uh, facilities to uh, oversee, the uh, C in is 2018 Policy address said that the Department of Health will set up a regulatory office uh, for private health care facilities to be responsible for enforcement and to protect the interests and rights of consumers. Upon passage of the bill, we will apply for a funding from the Council following usual procedures. Mr. Chan Han Ben also said that the administration will. Uh, introduce a course of practice for the council to examine. Codes of standard will set good practices and standards uh, for these facilities to follow to um, ensure uh, quality of service and to safeguard the interests of consumers. They're not legally binding. Mr. Chen Hanpen talked about a current Private hospital practices. Of course, we are concerned. Usually, uh, private hospitals can uh, determine a scope of service and uh, also target clients. Whether uh, patients uh, receive uh, treatment in a private hospital is subject to the professional judgment of uh, the doctor concerned and also the choice of the patient concerned. So there will be uh, codes of practice. We have not stopped private hospitals from advising patients to uh, seek or uh, to uh, consult another service provider subject to uh, not affecting uh, the well-being of the patient concerned. And we also encourage private hospitals to maintain good communication with patients. Mr. Chen Hanpan also commented on the uh, time limit for lodging a complaint. This two-year limit is decided making reference to policies and practices of uh, patient uh, complaint handling a mechanism locally and overseas. Uh, the Ombudsman's Office and also uh, the Private Sea Commissioner's Office and IPCC in Hong Kong have similar arrangements. So we believe that the time limit put here is appropriate. Dr. Hanela Wong also asked about um, private or public hospitals are taking private hospitals. In fact, uh, these are hospital authority initiatives and uh, the uh, fee is um, uh, based on uh, private consultation basis, there can be no waiver and uh, all patients will have to, to pay according to a, a fee schedule and they have to pay uh, for um, examination, diagnostic, treatment and drug costs. And for the prescription, the patients can choose to uh, purchase, well in the um, uh, private uh, visit, visit fee schedule can be found 
in the Gazette and the uh, Hospital Authority website. The HA also have a standardized mechanism in uh, dealing with the clinical records of uh, was the billing of the uh, private uh, visits. As for the inquiry on um, um, medical bills, the H the patients can um, liaise with the uh, sheriff of the hospital as well as the uh, doctor and nurses um, of the ward. And Dr. Wong also cared about the issues related to the electronic uh, records uh, sharing system. And the the administration have considered the code of practice in requesting all the hospitals to join the um, electronic health records sharing system. So after considering the uh, proposal, so under the new regime, a state and the code of practice that all private hospitals must join the HARSS as in the bill, uh, and that is one of the requirement of the code of, and if it violation of code of practice, the the director of health can take regulatory action. On complaints, I would like to provide uh, some more information here. You've seen a lot of members uh, are concerned about the new complaint handling mechanism, especially the uh, uh, complaints committee of the PHF, which is the second tier mechanism. So um, on the composition of the committee, we want to enhance the tra transparency and the credibility of this committee so as to uh, respond to the public aspirations on the formation, and therefore, um, the complaints committee would have half the members are uh, non registered doctors or dentists, which are lay persons. And to consider, and um, on the members' composition of the committee would achieve balanced participation to. Uh, engage different stakeholders to enhance the impartialness, transparency, and credibility. We also took the view that the uh, proposed composition have made the uh, formation goals and provide enough flexibility so that the secretary, when it comes to appointment of uh, different members, and to um, and well as the appointment of the chairman of the committee, and the um. Uh, thir there were 13 members informed when it will, um, based on the size and will the feasibility of uh, scheduling meetings to determine the uh, statutory composition of the committee. And for the uh, members also cared about the uh, com the uh, standards and for other healthcare facilities, for example, the private hospitals must comply the most stringent regulatory standards, and and according with the code of practice for private hospitals, nursing home, and maternity homes, and well as the um, PHF deal to setting the latest standards, and the Department of Health would uh, consult. Uh, the stakeholders on the code, revised code of practice. As for the Day Procedure Center, the Hong Kong Academy of uh, Medicine and the Department of Health had promulgated a core standards applicable to the ambulatory center facilities, as well as set up uh, for uh, um, procedure stand specific standards, for example, on dental and diagnostic, as well as uh, blood dialysis. And for the standards for certain procedures, for example, on chemotherapy, the rail, the drafting about to be completed. And for clinics, we'll also a check reference for the medical clinic ordinance cap three four three, and on the code of practice for registered clinics, as well as the similar standards in OC's jurisdiction. As the basis for drafting. And for the Day ambulatory facilities and the clinic could have already website to the MHP DH website. Upon the passage of the bill, the 
aforementioned standards will be adopted uh, uh, for ambulatory facilities and clinics. And it depends on the implementation timetable, we, we shall uh, consult the stakeholders on the code of practice president. I believe that the members have conducted an in-depth and discussion on the government's amendments and Dr. Chang's proposed amendments. I once again uh, request members to pass all three sets of amendments administration and reject Dr. Chang's amendment. Uh, and now, uh, and now I put the. And now, Secretary for Health, you may move your first group amendment. Those who agree, please raise your hand. Um, Mr. Ray Chan requests a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
開始表決。Voting begins. Please check your vote. Voting has stopped. Please show the results. 44 present, 39 for, 0 against, 4 abstentions. Uh, Declare the um, question is agreed by majority of members. I declare the amendments passed. And, and, and Madam, I move, Chairman, in the event of further divisions um, being claimed at division, meaning any spec of the bill, the sound so shall proceed here with division after division bell has been for one minute. And and up, and those who in favor put up your hand, those against, I declare the question is, um, is uh, declared, this occurred and that the question is uh, regret by the uh, RC and GC group of people and and I um, move that the in that of further division being claimed, this potential which shall be here with the division after division bell has been for one minute. And clause 2, 3, 12, 36, 50, 51, 53, 56, 61, 62, 70, 72, 82, 92, 93, 96, 118, 122, 225, 154, and 161, as sections 3 as amended. And I'll put a question to you. That the clause and schedule as amended just read out by the clerk stand part of the bill. Would those in favor please raise their hands? Those against please raise their hands. Uh, the question is agreed by the majority of members present. I declare the amendments passed. Before I call upon the secretary to move her second group amendment, I wish to remind members that if the secretary's second group amendment to delete clause 146 is passed, Dr. Fernandez Charles may not move his amendment to clause 146. Secretary for Food and Health, you may move your second group of amendment. Chairman, I have moved my second group of amendment to delete clause 146 as set in the appendix to the script. I propose a question to you that the second group of amendment moved by the Secretary for Food and Health be passed. And I put a question to you as stated. With those in favor, please raise your hands. Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed. By the majority of members present, I declare the amendments has passed. As for the amendment to delete one house one D four and and this as the amendments to delete class 24 has passed, class 24 is deleted from the bill, therefore Dr. Fernando Chang may not move his amendment to class 146. The council now deal with new clauses and new schedule. New class one 25A, application for license where scheduled nursing home already registered. New class 136A, shared entrance acceptable in some cases. New schedule 1A, scheduled universities. Second Chair of Food and Health, you may move your third group of amendments to read the new clauses and new schedule the second time. Chairman, I move my third group of amendments to read the new clauses. 125A, 136A, and new schedule 1A as set out in the appendix to the script the second time. I propose a question to you that the new clauses and new schedules read out by the clerk be read the second time. And I put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. New clauses 125A, 136A, and the new schedule 1A. Secretary for Food and Health. Chairman, I move that the new clauses 125A, 136A, and new schedule 1A be added to the bill. I now propose the question to you that the new clauses and new schedule read out by the cloud be added to the bill. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. All the proceedings on the private health care facilities bill have been concluded in committee of the whole council. Council now resumes. Secretary for Food and Health. President, I now report to the council. 
that the private health care facilities bill has been passed by committee of the whole council with amendments. I move the motion that this council adopts the report. I now propose a question to you that the motion moved by Secretary for Food and Health be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise your hands? Those against please, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Third reading, private health care facilities bill. Secretary for Food and Health.